All right, we are live. Welcome to the Jackson Rudolph Podcast. I'm your host, Jackson Rudolph, and this is episode 83. Still crazy to think we've done that many episodes of this podcast. We have a, uh, a guest returning. He was on the show uh, a while back, and I think it was before we were, we were definitely not doing video yet, I don't think. Uh, but it was definitely before we started doing anything live, right? Uh, so now here, live and in color, we've got Richard Avery Plowden, the top-ranked heavyweight point fighter in the world by the Black Belt Magazine rankings, fresh off of another Diamond Ring win, WKC World Championship. He's been winning on Virtual Fight Tour. Um, and Avery somebody that has won just about everywhere that you can win. And we're going to be talking about that a lot during this show. Uh, so for our Black Belt Magazine audience that maybe didn't see uh, Avery's first appearance on the podcast, uh, Avery, if you just want to uh, take a moment, introduce yourself a little bit, uh, tell the people who you are. Yeah, I'm uh, Richard Avery Plowden. I'm 28 years old. Um, I am a third degree black belt in Taekwondo. Been practicing martial arts for 23 years now. Yeah, since I was since I was four years old, turning five. So, uh, so 23 years now. Uh, from Detroit, Michigan. A proud Michigan graduate. Proud graduate of Wayne State University Law School. I've been a practicing attorney for about a year now. That's awesome. And we're definitely going to talk about that towards the end of the show, because that's one of the things we can count all the titles and talk about the great battles that you've had in the ring. But being able to also be successful outside of the martial arts and have a career in law, one of the hardest fields to get into and then to be able to, to maintain as a professional, uh, that's extremely impressive. So I got all the respect in the world for you on that endeavor. Uh, but let's, let's start with diamonds, right? Mm -hmm. Just happened back in October, uh, and the diamond ring is one of the most coveted awards that you can win in sport karate. Uh, but tell us about this one. Well, how did this one feel? What made this one different? Uh, and then also tell us how many are in the collection. Yeah, so uh, this, one, this one felt really good. I mean, I haven't competed in an actual national event, and the, the last time was AKA January 2020. And then what diamonds is October 2021. So it had been a minute. So I had I had done the WKC Nationals, um, but that was in my backyard, you know, that was in Detroit. And I had done the virtual fight tour, but there's something just different about you know doing a national event, doing a NASCA event, and especially the Diamond Nationals. I mean, Larry Carnahan um has built something incredible with the Diamond Nationals. And as you said, it's a very, very, very coveted prize in our activity. Um, and I won my first one in 2019, the last time the diamonds were held. So I wanted to do it again. And it, it, it felt great. Um, so this is my second ring. This is my sister's fourth, I believe. She won as well. And then my dad has one. So it was, it's, it's, it's just cool to add to the personal collection and then to add to the Plowder family collection as well. That's awesome. And you guys certainly stack them up, whether it's diamond rings, warrior cups, whatever <laughs> tournament y'all decide to go to, you stack up those titles. Uh, so in this particular title fight, uh, mm -hmm. you faced a, a new opponent, right? Somebody that's kind of one of the, the new uh, top heavyweight contenders in Team Next Level's Darren Absolutely. Payne, uh, otherwise known as D-Stacks, right? Uh, so just talk a little bit about sharing the ring with him. Was that your first matchup with him? Have you all fought before? No, that was my first time, at least as, as far as I can. Actually, I, I know. I remember all my fights. That was my first time fighting, fighting Darren. Uh, that was great. Um, you know, he's super young, super, super young. He's just getting started. And uh, that was a good time. It was it was it was it was a very good opportunity. Um, and, and I love it. I, he's, he's an excellent competitor, great fighter. And it was it was definitely an honor and, and a privilege to share the ring with him. It was a good time. So when you stand across the ring from a guy that you haven't fought before, mm -hmm. obviously as good as uh, won grand championships and made it to the stage a couple of times now, yeah. uh, was there anything he was doing in the ring that surprised you? Had you been able to get much film study on him? I mean, uh, what type of preparation do you have going into the ring against somebody that you haven't fought like him? Yeah. Um, so like one of our philosophies in the Plowden system, one of the things we say is it doesn't matter if you're the fastest or the strongest. What matters is if you're the smartest. And what that entails is, yes, watching a lot of tape. I watch tape on everybody. I, I watch everything. I watch everybody. Um, just not even necessarily just to scout, but just to see what I can steal, too. Like, so many of these competitors are just so talented. And just to see, like, what different things I can take and add to my game and see what they do well and definitely apply it. So, so that was definitely a factor. But uh, we also are proponents of you don't change what you do. Whatever you do, you do best, and you 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 make minor adjustments. So there was, there, there's no one that I stand across where I'm gonna change anything I do. Right? It could be Mike Tyson, 
You know, it could be Tyson Fury. I'm, I'm going to fight the way I fight. And, you know, as talented as Darren is, I just I still wasn't going to change anything necessarily about what I do. It was just going out there, fighting a, fighting a smart fight, um, and making him adjust to me, if anything, just doing what I had to do in order to get the win. I think that's a great mentality, and that's what we see a lot of the great fighters do. You very yeah. rarely see a great fighter having to change in order to win. They do their thing, and then it's the opponent's job yes, to be the great fighter yeah. to make the adjustment. You have to have an adjust, you adjust to me mentality. It's a battle of wills in there, right? And if, if someone's forcing you to adjust too much, that means they're dominating your will and you don't, you don't want that to happen. Absolutely. And by the way, those of you tuning in, as you guys are hearing some of these responses and we're talking about these different situations, if you guys have questions, feel free to drop those down in the comments. That's one of the best things about doing a live show is that we get to interact with the viewers a little bit. Absolutely. So Avery, we talk about, you know, I mentioned that Darren's one of kind of the, the new faces of the contenders, mm -hmm. the heavyweight division of the guys who have a chance to win the overall anytime they show up. Uh, we saw Brandon Ballou win the overall uh, back at the Battle of Atlanta. Uh, Edgar Germany wound up winning U.S. Open. Brian Rodriguez at Pan Ams. So the heavyweights, when you haven't been around this year, mm -hmm. uh, has been kind of uh, sparse. Different people have won different titles, right? And for a long time leading up to this season, you and I both know the matchup that everybody's been wanting to see is you and Cam Dawson. Because Absolutely. the consensus was that you and Cam are the best heavyweight point fighters in the world, right? Cam's had some injuries. He's got a baby, right? Yeah. So uh, Cam hasn't been as, as much in the game as I know Cam would like to be, right? Um, but in your eyes, given the state of sport karate right now and all these names that are kind of starting to get in the mix, who do you consider to be in, in that highest tier of heavyweights? Who really are the best heavyweights right now? Uh, and who are you most excited to have matchups with? No, I mean, every everybody you just named are, are, are great fighters. Brandon, Edgar, um, Darren, obviously, all the, all those, all those guys are great. I mean, me personally, who I look forward to fighting, the answer is everybody, right? I don't, I don't, I don't, um, I don't, when I was younger, you know, it used to be like, you know, I wanted to fight Raymond, right? I wanted to fight Jody. I wanted to fight Trevor. I wanted to fight Ross. Somehow I blinked and woke up and I'm one of the older, you know, people in the, the, the in the division. I'm, I'm a vet and it's not, that's not in disrespect to those guys. Like I respect all of them. Respect the, the 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 hell out of them, but um, I see everything. I pay attention to everything. Those guys are saying they want to fight me, right? Like I'm 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 that guy now. I'm my my we we say around here is easier to be the hunter than the hunted, right? It's easy to kill yourself when you're just starting out. When you're when you're 17, 18, 19, you just get into the men's division. It's easy to go out there, no pressure. You're fighting the Raymond. You're fighting the Jada. You're fighting the Ross. You're fighting the Zoe, right? Nobody knows you. It's easy to go in and train and want that. It's harder being in the position I'm in now, which I still can't believe I'm in, where I'm that where I'm that guy that people are like, oh, I want to beat him. I want to, oh, he's, he, you know, he's the best. I want to beat him. So I'm in that position now, right? And it's, at, at this point, um, my sister said it for a few years, but at this point, it's a matter of me beating myself. It's a matter of me beating my own legacy. Because even though I am one of the, I am older than all those, except Brian. Brian Brian's, you know, Brian's in his 30s, but who still looks awesome, though. But... You know, I'm on the older tier, but I don't even think I've hit my prime yet, right? My dad, my dad talks about how he did his best fighting after 30. So, I think it's, I think it's a matter of me beating myself at this point. Like, and, and that, again, there's no disrespect to anybody else, but I've, I've done the chasing, right? I've, I've, those, those guys are, you know, they're not fighting anymore. You know, uh, Jody's doing his thing, Raymond's doing his thing. Those are the, the guys I chase. Now it's a matter of, you know, Avery, what can you do to, to do better than you've done before? You know, why, why are you still doing this? You know, you've, you've won everything at this point, won stuff multiple times, uh, making, you know, some pretty good money. Um, what's, what's the point of you doing this? And, and that's the question that I, that I walk into the, to the school with, to the karate school with every day is why am I here? And that's to be the, the best that I can be one of the best of all time. Like that's really my goal at this point. I, I think that's, more than ever, if ever possible before, that's actually in my in my sights. I can actually see that. Yeah, I mean, that's so cool. And, and you said it so beautifully there. It's that transition from, just like you said, being the one who's chasing everybody to being the one that's being chased. Yeah, and, and I, it, I, I see everybody behind me. You know, I see it. But it's, <laughs> um, I'm not ready to pass. Like, I'm not I'm not ready to slow up yet. Right. I'm, I'm still four speed ahead. I'm. I'm ready to go. And I don't know when this happened. I seriously, mm -hmm. as, as far as I remember, I was just going in training and going to tournaments. And then 
all of a sudden you become the the hunted instead of the hunter, but it is what it is. Right. And what I find so interesting about that is that it's the same thing in forms and weapons, but I wouldn't yeah. have expected it to be that way in fighting. Because in forms and weapons, yeah, you're against other people, but it's really who, what score the judge is going to give you, right? right. So it's right. very individualistic in your performance. Yes. Yeah. There does come a point where it's no longer like, oh, I want to beat this guy that right. I want to do at whatever tournament. It right. becomes, you know, how many of these titles can I win to make my case for being the best at this or the best at that to ever do it, right? And, and I think that's, and I think that not chasing a particular person and instead chasing your own goals, I think that helps you elevate more, right? Because if I'm, if I'm like, oh man, I really want to beat Jody Tension, and then Jody Tension doesn't show up at a tournament, and I lose to some scrub, then then what did any of it matter for? Rather than I want to be the best that I can be, I want to win the Battle of Atlanta, I want to win the WKC World Championship, I want to win the Diamond Ring. If I set those goals for myself, then it becomes about me. It's not about other people. I'm doing I'm doing this, I'm doing this for myself. And I know, you know, that's that's not like it's a lot of fighters that take this personally and want to be particular people. Not me. Like these, you know, y'all, y'all, everybody's just a body. Right, I just I just want to be the best. Whoever I have to be to be the best, that's what I want to do. I love that mentality. That's awesome. So now we're, we're going to jump back to diamonds because one of my favorite things that has happened post pandemic is Jesse Ray with Virtual Fight Tour has Absolutely. brought back the lightweight winner versus the heavyweight winner I love for the it. Virtual Fight Tour Last Man Standing, and it's happened at a couple of NASCAR events now: America, Diamonds, Pan Ams. Uh, so you were in that in diamonds as the heavyweight diamond ring winner. Uh, and it's interesting how we talk about this whole, like, the vet against the new guys, right? Yeah. The new guys are really good right now, and Bailey Murphy is kind of at the top of that pack. As the top Not kind of. He's at the top. Bailey's a man. <laughs> exactly, right? Uh, and then you're at the top of those vets, right? <laughs> so you all met in the virtual fight tour last man standing final. Incredible fight. Went to overtime. We'll talk about how everything wound up going. But first, I just want to get inside of the mind of the fighter here. Mm -hmm. You're going to overtime in that high profile of a match. What's going through your head as you're you're bouncing and ready to take off? Bliss, bliss. I mean, I'm 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 telling. I, I told my I told my uh my father, you know, be before I fought, I didn't think I would. I never thought I would get here, right? Like I just I, I struggled, you know, coming up. Like that's why when I see juniors that get upset with them, so upset with themselves for losing, I'm like, man, you have no idea where you can get to. Like you like this is nothing, right? Because that was me. I never thought that I would be, you just said I'm at the top, right? I never thought somebody would describe me like that. So I'm more nervous for my first fight at an event than I am when it's time to, to fight for all the marbles, right? At that point, you know, it's, it's not about money. It's not, it's not about even necessarily the title. It's about like, who's the best in the world. And that's what me, Bailey and I were fighting for in, in my estimation at that point. And it was, it was a blast. I love it. I want that. I want that every event I want. I mean, don't get me wrong. I had the butterfly. Like that was there. <laughs> but I want that, right? I, I I want the pressure. I want the moment. I want, I I I, I want to remember that when I'm when I'm outside and running and that and that feeling of, of of being on that stage. I never want to lose that. So, in that moment, is just the only thing you you you're, you're thinking about when you're right there is just, at least in my estimation, is happiness, mm -hmm. right? The 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 when I was 18, 19, the stuff that was fun for me, going out, going to frat parties, that's not fun for me anymore, right? But going, but being at a karate tournament. Being in the finals of a karate tournament, that's more fun than ever. Mm -hmm. So that's um it's just is is happiness for me, man. It's just happiness. Let's go, let's get these three minutes and let's let's prove we're the best in the world. That's all that's going through my mind. I love it. I love it. Now you mentioned the first thing that you said was you're thinking blitz, right? And this is no, a blitz. Oh, sorry, bliss. Like happiness, yeah. bliss. Oh, okay. Well, hey, yeah. I like that better. I like yeah, bliss. yeah, yeah. Bliss. Sorry, not blitz. Bliss. That, that still yeah. brings up a good question, even though yeah. I misheard you, right? Because it does seem that in high profile for the overall grand, these point fights that go to overtime, both fighters, there's like this social contract that like, okay, we're going to blitz and whoever hits first is going to win, right? Yeah. Why do you think that is? Is that something where it's just like in that moment, fighters are just like, well, I'm just faster, so I'm just going to beat you? Or like, have you ever thought about that? Because me, like every time we see overtime, I feel like, we see off the line, off the line, off the line until there's enough judges to call it one way or the other. Well, it, it, it really it kind of depends, right? Like with with Bailey and I, when, when that happened, we're both blitzers. Like that's just what we both do. It's just that's just the fact of the matter. But I've been in overtime with a zote and he kicked. I've been I've been in overtime with with um with some with even Cameron, right? And he's kicked. 
right? So it, it, it really depends on like what people are most comfortable with. I think in that situation, Bailey and I are just both punchers, man. Like it's just we're just we're just both gonna go. And it was just it was what happens when an unstoppable force meets an immovable object, and it was a battle of wills. I mean, honestly, looking back, I wish I didn't blitz, right? Like that's you know, that's I I I thought about that all the time. Like I should have done something else, should have set something up. So it's it's just a matter of comfortability in that situation, at least. In my estimation of and I've watched that fight of Bailey and I a thousand times. It's just a matter of both of us having a bread and butter and both of our bread and butters. And if we need to score, what we're going to score with is going to be a blitz. Especially because in, in VFT, I don't even think, was it win by two? Mm, I don't know if it was win by two or not. It might yeah, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know if it was. So, But I know it was overtime and it was time to go. So we were both going to, we were just both going to use our bread and butter at that point. Right. Absolutely. And I've gone back and watched that fight several times as well. The one thing that I will say is that in the moment, this is really hard for judges to call, right? And I think that by and large, the judges did a good job of not calling it when it was really close because yes. you don't want to not know for sure when you're right. deciding an overtime, right? But I will say that was a fight that could have gone either way. And I think you it, know it, it went Bailey's way. That's the, you know, this is the timeline we're in. So that's just how I look at it. I got to be better. That's the, that's the only way for me to look at it. It shouldn't, it shouldn't have been that close, in my estimation. Mm -hmm. And I think that's a great way to look at it. So yes, now, sir. moving on from Diamonds, yes, you sir. turned right around and went and had a dominant run at a WKC World Championship. Yes, my favorite event. We talked about the show before about how much you love competing in that environment, representing your country. Uh, obviously, your your dad is the, uh, the head honcho of uh, WKC Team USA. Mm -hmm. uh, you had Murphy Gonzalez sitting in the chair for you, though, this yes. time. Your dad yes, yes. Just tell us about that whole experience. Yeah, so um, you know, went to WKC. I was working, you know, that that week. Luckily enough, we work remote, but I got to um, I still got to feel the energy of WKC. And because we're in a pandemic, we weren't able to get um our European contingent to come, but it was still amazing. Our our Western Hemisphere contingent, uh, Canada, USA, Venezuela, Guatemala, Puerto Rico, it was amazing, right? Mexico, it was it was fantastic, and it's just it's such a patriotic environment. And I, I, I really consider myself a patriotic person. Like this is the best country in the world. And to, to get to represent it in a way that the WKC gives me the opportunity to. Oh, I love it, man. I love it. Seriously, I, I, I love putting on that uniform. I, I, I love hearing the chance of USA is it's the best time in the world. I look forward to it literally every year. Like I, I love it. Yeah, I remember back in the day. I haven't done WKC, but hey, maybe before it's all said and done, I need to. Right? Oh, yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, back in the day, I did some of the WKA stuff. And there, mm -hmm. there was something different about wearing a Team USA uniform and, and representing your country. I mean, I guess my my patriotism is obvious now that I'm in the military. Yeah. I'm, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Doc. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, but yeah, there, there is something truly special about that. Speaking of special... I saw some clips from WKC and you landed a pretty uh, nasty spin hook <laughs> kick. And the Avery Clown that I know is a blitzer and a back fister and a defensive side kicker. Is uh, is that spin hook kick a new weapon you got? No, I mean, dude, I'm, <laughs> I'm a like like I just told you, I'm a third degree black belt in Taekwondo, uh -huh. right? I mean, I've been <laughs> I've been doing spin kicks since I was a baby, but it's just you know my my fight game. I'm I'm not a super at least. Ross disagrees with me, but I don't think I'm a super athletic person. Like I just, I've, I've never been the fastest, never been able to jump the highest, um, never been the strongest. So my my game has always been that of a very basic game, right? That's just something I inherited from my father. I, I, have, a, I have a very, very basic fighting game. It's just, it just is what it is. And that's what works for me. But as I've gotten older and more experienced, um, I, I try stuff sometimes. Like I try a jump back kick sometimes. I try a, a spin kick, a back leg kick. And I've just been trying to evolve more as I become more comfortable. I'm more comfortable than I've ever been. And you know, why not why not have some fun? Right? Like, like, like I said, I'm I'm approaching my prime. Um, if if, if not entering it, and I want to use and I use as many weapons as I can and grow as much of as a fighter as I possibly can. So that's 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 just where the spin hook kick come came from. You will be seeing more of that. You, you you'll be seeing more of a lot of stuff, man. I'm 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 only getting started. I feel younger than ever. That's awesome. I love it. Um, and by the way, for the kids watching, the aspiring young point fighters, take it from Avery Plowden first. There's nothing wrong with staying basic. The number one, oh, thing, no. I, oh. number one thing that I hear coaches yell at their fighters, especially Coach Damon, is stay basic. Stay yep. basic, right? Damon's a genius of the game. Stuff. Yeah, no, um, I'm not. 
you, <laughs> I'm not allowed to do stupid stuff, as my dad calls it, unless I'm up by about six or seven points. Uh-huh. And sometimes I ask, right? I didn't ask for the spin kick because I honestly wanted to surprise him. So it's, um, you know, some I, I usually have to be up by enough or, you know, it just it depends on the situation. I wouldn't call a spin kick stupid. It's just you shouldn't be throwing, you know, 20 of them in a fight. Like, that's insane. But obviously, you know, you're watching Raymond. He is the best in the world with spin kicks. So it's a very practical technique. But staying basic is definitely, definitely something that's beneficial, without a doubt. For sure. So we've talked about diamonds. We talked about WKC, uh, an event that you weren't at, but they got a ton of press recently because of some big fights that happened over there was Waco World Championships, right? Absolutely. Uh, And by a lot of fighters' estimation, Waco is where you get oftentimes the most diverse mix of talent. I'll put it that Mm -hmm. way. Because I think there's been NASCAR tournaments that are harder to win than Waco tournaments. And I think there's been Waco tournaments that are harder to win than some NASCAR tournaments, right? So when it comes to difficulty, I think it can go either way. Right? I'm with you, Jackson. I'm with but you. You get the most diverse mix, and obviously we got that at a, at Waco this year, and we saw Elijah and Bailey in that mega fight, and there were other great fights along the way, especially in teams, right? So as you see some of those matchups over there, um, well, where are you at with the Waco stuff? Do you want to go and do more Waco in the future? I know Irish Open obviously is a, a big title to go win uh, that you don't have on your resume right now. That is true. Uh, so do you do you have any interest in the in the Waco world? Yeah, I don't have interest in leagues necessarily. Mm-hmm. Um, I definitely want to win the Irish Open. You know, I I feel like, you know, I've, I've won everything else. I know my sister wants to wear it as well. I mean, wants to win it as well. I want to win it um, because why not? But as far as the Waco World Championships, I mean, nothing against Waco, but I just, I don't know. I don't really necessarily see any desire to do it. Like I have a reputable world championship that I take part in every year. I love it. And um, it's like you said. The the what I want to do is fight the best people, right? Mm-hmm. Who's the most winningest um Waco adult world champion of all time? It's Zolt Zolt, right? Right. Zolt. Yeah. Zolt. Zolt has the most Waco world championships. I have a winning Zolt, record. Zolt has more world titles. Yeah, yeah. Zolt, Zolt has the more world titles. Zolt, did Zolt pass Christian? Yes. Yeah, okay. Yeah, it's, it's Zolt. Yep. And I've I have a winning record against Zoe. I have a winning record against Kristen. I have a winning record against Laszlo. Mm-hmm. I think me and Tomas are tied, mm-hmm. right? I've fought Elijah. We have a we have a tied record, even though I've been fought him since he's been who Elijah is, right? Which I would love to do. But though the the people Enrique just won a world championship. I have a winning record against yeah. Enrique, Bailey, uh, mm-hmm. Troy Beans. Those people that are winning over there, I fight, right? And I beat. So I don't feel I don't necessarily feel any need to go prove myself by doing a, a Waco world championship. Again, I want to win the Irish open because that's, that's just, you know, Raymond wanted how many times and Raymond's the best of all time. So I feel like I have to, like I have to do that one, but no, I don't necessarily feel like any league mm-hmm. is, is is better than any other. It's wherever writers go, that's where I want to be. And although everybody that got gold at Waco world, I see in the, in the, in the places I go to already. Mm-hmm. So cool. it with, 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 with what I think are a little, uh, rules you know a little little bit of rules so <laughs> I'll, I'll 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 play i'll play that game with them right right you know for sure and you know it goes back to the old saying if you want to be the man you got to beat the gotta man, beat the man. Right? yes sir the way you look at it if you're fighting all of the guys and have fought and beat before all the guys that are winning over there then what's the point in trying to go and chase that world title you know but at the same time, I know exactly what you mean. When there's that tournament that you don't have, yeah, game. you know that's. The, I, I have I have to give Mr. Baker credit, Roy Baker. You know the Irish Open is something special, and um, I mean I, I have to give Raymond credit. R- Raymond helped build that. Like that's the you know they call Staples Center the house that Kobe built. Is it nine? I don't. I don't. It's, however many. It's, it's ridiculous. Number. Yeah. Yeah. The, <laughs> they, they they call Staples Center the house that Kobe built. The Irish Open is the house that Raymond Daniels built. Mm-hmm. Like it just is. He he did something special with that event. And I, I'm not trying to take away from any of the other phenomenal world champions that have won it. I'm not trying to take away from Zolt or Richie or, or Elijah. I'm not trying to take away from those guys. But doing that nine or ten times, that's 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 crazy. Right. And he he put a certain prestige there. And then how how Mr. Baker runs it, how efficient it is. This is definitely a special event, without a doubt. And it's one I want to win. I, I I can admit that and I will say that out loud. Is is definitely one that I want. For sure. And I will say, having been there to the point fighting open weight final as a spectator, 
uh, that is like one of the most electric environments. Without a doubt. Before, right. With everybody Without sitting around doubt. that ring, it, it's truly special. Um, and I certainly hope as an Andrew Clapton fan that I, I see you in that final yes. today. Um, so now we're going to move on from competition a little bit. We're going to get into some other things. Okay. Uh, kind of coming out of the pandemic, you've been working a lot with Century Martial Arts. Yes. Uh, you've been doing some ambassadorship for them. Uh, and it's actually kind of funny how all that started because I was working for – on yep. Century, I still work for Century. But I was working on site with Century for that year that I was going through the application the process for medical school. And um, the, the way that it came up, I don't even know if you know this story, is literally some guys in the office were like, hey, we need to do a photo shoot for some catalogs and some other products, stuff like that. Uh, and because I was the, the guy that was a competitor, they were like, yeah. I don't know anybody. Uh, and I was like, yeah, let me get in touch with, you know, some point fighters that I know, stuff like that. And obviously, you know, you and Morgan is the. Yes. The, and we appreciate that. Jackson. Thank you, brother. And female side. You guys were in front of mine. And so I shot you guys messages and you were like, yeah, we'll come out and do a photo shoot. Yeah. That's kind of how that whole thing started. But I'll let you speak a little bit uh, to what all you've been doing with them and, and how Century's been for you. Oh, no. Yeah. And we've so what we've, we've done two photo shoots now and mm -hmm. both have been phenomenal. I mean, I've so I've done <laughs> I think I think, you know, I think I'm a pretty, pretty boy. So I've done like, you know, college photo shoots and fashion shows in, in undergrad at Michigan. But. What Century does is just so professional, and it's it's it really makes you feel like a professional athlete. The way they treat us, just 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 how they take care of us, is is it's a wonder. It's a wonderful time. Um, beautiful beautiful scenery. Like I got to we got to go to Colorado. We got to go to Oklahoma. Like it was it was just a great time. Just the professionalism, and then just being an ambassador, and then taking care of us. I was literally just wearing one of my Century uniforms, wearing my Century gear to work out in. I have a wave master in my apartment now that I get to work out in at home. Like it's Century's great, man. And they take care of us. And it's that when 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 you had my sister come out and I tagged along and I became part of it too, I did not expect the relationship that's that's been built. And I really have to give Century credit for how much they've invested, not just in martial arts, but sport karate in general. The last couple of years has been phenomenal. And and I have to thank you. For doing that like that's you're you're a huge ambassador not just like for our sport period right you take care of everybody forms weapons point fighting that's awesome man and century century has done their job too like it's it's, it's great like i got to be on the cover of black belt magazine like that's like that's that's freaking awesome i had people like my friends like yo i, I, I have your magazine like in barnes and noble like that's you know that that kind of stuff that's the kind of stuff I, i'll get to tell my kids about one day Right now, I get to thank Century for that and get to thank Black Bell Magazine for that. And thank you for that. So it's been great. Absolutely. And, and that means like that, that fills my heart with joy <laughs> to hear that because that yeah, was, I, I had two goals when, when I went to work for Century and Black Bell, right? The number one goal was help those brands as much as I possibly can to yes. grow and develop and be the best they can be. Absolutely. And number two, I saw the opportunity as someone who truly believes what's the power of what sport karate can do for people. I would not yeah. be the man that I am today if it was not for sport karate. I would not Thank be you. in medical school. I wouldn't have gotten to travel the world if it was not for sport karate. And so in, in the spirit of kind of spreading the gospel of sport karate, that is why I made such a push, you know, for, for Black Belt to cover it more consistently. And now we've grown a great community within Black Belt magazine uh, of new sport karate fans. And I think yeah. that's the coolest thing in the world. Yeah. Uh, and, and thank you for being willing to, you know, participate, and, uh, be a part of the, the century shoots and, you know, allow us to use your likeness for the cover and stuff. like <laughs> that. Um, So, yeah, I, I could not be more pleased with uh, with how Century and Black Belt has, has truly embraced. Uh, Absolutely. Same. And that same. is not all me. There, there are people within Century yes. that don't get yes. nearly enough credit um, for all the work that they've done and yes. being willing to listen to me on some of this stuff yes. <laughs> and make the whole thing happen. Um, so I, I can, I, I can, I mean, if, if, really if, 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 they, if they don't know it and if nobody else says it, Morgan and Avery Plowden really, really appreciate you guys. Seriously, we do. That's awesome. Uh, so shout out to uh, Century and Black Belt Magazine. 100%. The 100%. Podcast. Shame <laughs> uh, so moving on now, uh, we've mentioned you, your sister. We've mentioned your dad. And we talked about this in your first appearance on the show as well. We talked about your dad. We talked about training with your sister. Mm -hmm. But there's another member of the of the Plowden family that deserves a shout out. And that is yes. like, probably the greatest sport karate cheerleader of all time. <laughs> Uh, which is your mom, Miss Plowden, right? Yes, uh, Mrs. Deborah Plowden. Loudest voice when you and Morgan are fighting. 
Uh, I have seen her emotions go through the highs and the lows along with you guys. Uh, yeah. and that's just so special to watch. So I'll let you talk a little bit about uh, Mama Cloud. Yeah, no, it's man, it's it's been it's really been a heck of a journey, right? Because over 10 years ago, when my sister and I really started coming out on the circuit, there were people that said they didn't even know my dad had kids, right? Because we weren't super active junior competitors. It's not like we were we we you know, you look at you go you look at a Tyson Ray. I call a Tyson a prodigy, right? Because that kid, he's been out forever and he's amazing. And look at what he's doing, right? That wasn't me, right? Maybe my sister too. My sister was super talented. But that wasn't me. But as, you know, my sister and I became more famous or, for the lack of a better term, or more active and more winning, my mom started saying, I'm not staying at home. Because we used to go to tournaments without her. And she would stay with our dog. We have a 10-year-old golden retriever. And she would stay with the dog. And she started saying, I'm not, I'm not staying at home. And my mother could not care less about fame, about attention. She just wants to go and watch her grown children, who will always be her babies, do what they love to do. Like, that's all she wants to do. And so she didn't expect, and she still doesn't even realize what a figure she is in the activity. She's just going out there and just has a loud voice and is cheering for her, um, and is just cheering for her kids. And it's so great. It's, it's, it's awesome that all of us play a role. Like, my father, obviously, is our instructor. My sister and I, you know, we both fight to support each other. But my mother is that foundation. And I'm not exaggerating when I say that. Like, before... Every time before I fight, I have a ritual, I have a litany of stuff I do, but one of the things I do is kiss my mother on her head. Like, seriously, before before I fight, every time I have to kiss my mother on her head. If she's there and she's at 99% of events, I have to kiss her on her head and tell her I love her, right? Because I because it's stressful for her us being out there. Like, you you know, you may have some videos when one of us has gotten stuck and she freaks out a little bit because she, she really loves us and cares about us. And it's <laughs> she. I just have to, I have to make sure she knows. Like, yo, I know I'm going out there for another grown man. A punch and kick me in the face, but I'm okay. I'm all right. I love you. Thank you for being here. Thank you for taking the time. And then it's it's nothing else she would rather do. Like she she would she wants to do nothing more than sit there and support her children and be there with her family. And she's she's the she's the best she's the best support system ever. She knows she knows. Because she dealt with my father when he lost, and he he was worse than my sister and I are when we lose, and we're horrible. But she knows how to deal with us when we lose. Like when I lost at Diamonds, right? She said, "Baby, I am so proud of you." She she doesn't talk about any of the judging, right? She's just like, "It's okay, you get them next time." She's like, Do you, "Are you? Is it okay for me to talk to you?" Like she's just she's there, and she's like, "Baby, I'm proud of you no matter what." And it's just it's such a gift having that, and and I think I don't I don't. I'm not going to say any names or, or, or not, and I don't mean to point any fingers, but I think a lot of parents can take a lesson from her, right? Mm-hmm. My, my, my father's in a weird place where he's our instructor. So he has to criticize us a bit. My mother does not criticize our fighting at all. My mother understands the game. She criticizes a lot of people fighting, right? She's, she, y'all think she's nice, but she, that, that woman can criticize some people's fighting, but she does not criticize my sister and I's fighting. She's just supportive. And I think a lot of people, a lot of parents can learn from that. Right. And kids in particular, competitors are hard enough on themselves. Right. They have instructors to be hard on them. They don't need mom and dad chewing them out after they already lost or even if they won and they didn't do their best. They don't need they just need the parent to say, baby, I love you. I'm here for you. And Deborah Plowden is the is, is, is the best at that. She could not care. Man, if I got 10 pointed, I've been I've been seven pointed. And she said, baby, you look great. And I think more parents can learn from that. And more kids need to hear that from their parents. They don't. They don't need. The, they don't need the parents being the bad guy to them, man. Right? Especially, especially moms. Like, oh my god. Like, come on. You're supposed to. You're supposed to love me no matter what. You know. So she. She is. She is the foundation. She is my rock. Like, and my sister feels the same way. I'm not. My sister also has a ritual she does with her. I'm not gonna say what it is. You know, we're a little superstitious. Um, but my sister has a ritual she does with her before she fights too. So it's. She's everything. She really is. Mm-hmm. That's awesome, and yeah. I see uh, we've got a, a sport karate mom jumping in the comments. Miss Jeannie Jones, mother of Ben Jones, uh, obviously loving that. And I mean, come on, anybody tuning in should love that, right? Yeah, uh, absolutely. You mentioned as you were going through that description, you you reminded me of a of a story that's actually like in retrospect, it's hilarious. Was not funny at the time, but, <laughs> so I remember being there. I'm fairly certain it was Pan Am's, right? Uh-huh. 
And what was crazy about it is you were fighting Ross, which by the yeah, way, yeah, yeah, 2012. Uh, you got me out. <laughs> uh, congratulations to you guys. Um, but anyways, you were fighting Ross, and what, what's funny is I was sitting uh, to your back, so I could see Ross's face when oh, Ross, wow. Ross clipped you, and you went yeah, down, right? yeah. And Ross's face went like white as a sheep. Yeah. I wasn't trying to do that, right? Yeah. But what was crazy was, and this is a testament to how much your mom has really invested in this, there wasn't just a medic going on stage to check you out. They had to send a medic over to your yep. mom because she like, yep. it, right? Do you, yep. do you remember that? <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I don't. I don't remember that. <laughs> I tease, I, it's funny. I tease, because when, when, when Ross and I fight, we don't bow out. We really don't. We don't believe in that. And I love Ross. Like, I cried at his wedding. Like, I said, like, I cried and congrats again, Ross and Maddie. But like, I love him. But when we fight, for some reason, we're just able to turn that off. But of course, he didn't mean to knock me out or anything. But my mother, yeah, she evidently, I've been told this, but she sprinted, and ended up falling, and she's she's just so impressed. She sprinted and fell. Okay. Yeah, she sprinted and fell. Yeah, yeah. People, when that's why whenever people ask about MMA, one, I just don't want to do it. But two, she couldn't handle it. I could not do that to my mother. She's just. She's just too emotional. I couldn't do it. Like she, because she wouldn't be allowed to watch, but she would still want to watch. So it, she's just too invested. She loves her children. All, all. Evan doesn't compete, but Evan, Evan is my cousin. But that's her son too. But she's invested in all of our lives. That's her, her, her priority in her life are her children. So yeah. And when we're out there, she, um, she's very invested. When I fell off the stage at Diamonds, man, she was freaking <laughs> out, trying to run over and catch me. So yeah, she's she, she's everything. That's awesome. And so we, we keep bringing up your sister, right, Morgan? Yeah. By the yeah. way, reminds me, we gotta get Morgan on the show. Morgan, if you're watching this, we gotta get you on the show. Yes, yes, yes. yes. I will mention it. We, we need to hear her side of all this. Yeah, but, we need it. Um, I, I kind of have a funny question because I, I saw a Facebook post not too long ago. Yeah. Uh, where you posted a screenshot of a text conversation between you and your sister. Ah, uh, yes. We yeah. won this tournament together. Which tournaments have we won together? Which a is such a cool conversation to have. Um, do y'all ever compare titles? Do y'all ever talk about like, oh, I beat this, I, I beat this person, or I got this many? Do y'all ever have conversations like that? So tying my mother back into it, my mother. <laughs> um, my mother uh, took us to church every Sunday growing up, Christian Baptist, right? Grew up in the church. That's what my mom did. And I have to thank God that Morgan was born first and I wasn't because she is much better at being a big sibling than I ever could have been, right? Because she was always, she she wasn't, my sister's the greatest point fighter of all time. I don't care what anyone else has to say. She just is. But greatest woman point fighter of all time, period. I don't care what anyone else has to say. I'm not going to argue it. But she wasn't always where she is, but she started off even as a rookie winning the Daytona Nationals, winning a NASCAR overall. And by the time I got to adult, she was winning somewhat consistently. And around like 2012, I only had one overall and she had several, and I definitely wasn't winning consistently. And I definitely had a little bit of a phase of a tinge of jealousy, right? Wasn't long, um, but it would just happen, right? I feel like it's natural. Um, but she never made it competitive. She never cared, right? She was always just so good. She's such a good big sibling. She always made sure I was focusing on me and thinking about me, right? And that was hard for me. I grew up in the shadow of my father, and now I was growing up in the shadow of of of, of my big sister, who was who was so good, and it was it was hard because I wasn't winning consistently yet, and she just handled that so well. I. I have to give myself credit. I don't think I ever showed that towards her, really. Like, I would never do that. We're be- Like, we're literally best friends. I would do anything for her, kill for her, die for her. Um, but she just did a, such a good job of making sure there was no sibling rivalry in anything we did. From school to karate, she was always just my supporter, right? She was just always just my, my dog. Like, that was that's just always how it was. So when I actually started really winning consistently, like, six – six, five or six years ago, we started doing it together, right? And she had more, but she never rubbed in my face like, oh, I have this many Warrior Cups. And I love her so much. Like, at, you know, I'm bigger than her, right? And I'm when it comes to her, I'm crazy. So anybody messing with her, it's like, yo, what's up? So for me, I wasn't trying to compete with her either. I was just happy. Like, there would be tournaments where I lost, and she was still fighting. I didn't care that I lost. My sister's fighting. And the same thing with, and as I got better, the same thing would happen to her. We didn't care anymore, right? And then she tore her ACL. Well, I tore my shoulder. 
So she was fighting and I was still supporting her. Then she tore her ACL and I was fighting, started winning a lot more. And she was just supporting me. And then it got to a point where we were just winning together. And now even if one of us loses, but the other one wins, we just, we're just together. It's just us. And it's just, I don't know. It's, it's no competition there. Like we can pair. Yes. But both my father and I have just kind of just admitted, like, oh, you're better than us. We don't really care. <laughs> like, like my, my, my dad's funny because he, it's a lot of parents that if they were in their, in his position, they would try to make themselves bigger than their kids. He does not care. He is so proud of us. I remember when we both won U.S. Open together, he said, I never won the U.S. Open. I'm so proud of y'all. And so to take that another step, both me and my dad have just kind of accepted, like, yo, you're the GOAT. Like, we're just, you know, my 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 dad's a legendary fighter. He's the man. And mm -hmm. I'm I'm blazing my own path. And that's just that's just how it's looked at, man. There's no, there's no rivalry there. I if I I'm telling you, if I called her right now and put her on speaker and was like, dang, you won way more events than me, she would hang up the phone. She'd get pissed. <laughs> because she just she just loves me that much and it's just it's 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 ride or die man like that's just how we are like it's 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 i could <laughs> i could never like i could never date someone in karate because i'm never cheering for anyone over my sister like it's just it's it's we we may as well have come out the womb together man like that's that's is we're one on one and such a special bond between the two of you and it's obvious when we see you guys up there cheering each other on and uh you know it, it's the, the nerd in me comes out when you start, you know, mentioning Morgan as the greatest female fighter of all time. I start going through the list and thinking about like who all's in that conversation. Right. And then I had this epiphany. If I could, if I had like three wishes, right. And I could turn back time and I could get one like team fight in their prime, you and Morgan against Trevor and Chelsea. I would love it. Oh, 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 my God. oh, oh, I would love it. Oh, I love it because I fought Trevor one time, one time, Smack Internationals 2013. I was 19 years old and I lost. Lost by two points. Oh, I was pissed. And my sister lost to Chelsea at that same event, and I think in overtime. So she lost to Chelsea and I lost to Trevor in that same event. So my sister would have been, what, 22, 23? I was 19. Oh, man, I would love – and I love Trevor, right? I, don't, don't get me wrong. I love Chelsea. Both phenomenal fighters. Right in, in in contention for being the greatest of all time, both of them, without a doubt. Of course, I'm biased, right, towards my sister. But no, I would. No, Trevor Nash, Chelsea Nash, Avery Plowden, Morgan Plowden, the greatest sport karate, you know, brother, sister, siblings of all time. No debate. Mm -hmm. No debate about it. Absolutely. About and then you look at extend the families, right? Between you, Morgan, Travis, your dad, and then yeah, man, yeah, that's scary. <laughs> you know, the side of things too. You yeah. have Trevor, Chelsea, Casey, right? Who yeah, is, yeah, Rich, right. I mean, like yep. that. That it, it's crazy. But anyway, yeah, special. Moving on, yeah, absolutely yeah. special. <laughs> uh, so I want one more question about you and Morgan because yeah, I, I feel this way sometimes about uh, Gabrielle, my fiance. I feel this way sometimes about students, right? Yes. So when when you're watching Morgan fight. Are you more or less nervous than when you're up there fighting yourself? Um, it's different. Mm -hmm. It's different. I don't know. Mm -hmm. I'm in control when I when I fight, right? I've, I've I haven't perfected it, but I've more or less learned how to control my nerves. Um, I might be more invested with her because I also, <laughs> I also, yeah, I'm more most. I don't know about nerves, but I'm more emotionally invested in her fights mm -hmm. because with me, it's all up to me. With her, I'm, I'm defensive, man. Like I, uh, the, the 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 way my father raised me, like since I was 12 or 13, look out for your mother and sister. You're a man now, right? So that's that's just how I am, and it's just you know seeing different women hit her late, like I, or seeing seeing different dudes start crazy on the sidelines. That's when the Detroit in me pops out. Mm -hmm. Like that doesn't pop out that much when I'm fighting, maybe a little bit, but when different dudes talk, when my sister's fighting, it's like oh. I'm going to talk crazy now because it's, you know, that's, that's my sister. But, you know, it with me, eh, it's me out there. All I care about is me winning. When it's her, I care about her winning, but I also just got to look out for her and everything. Mm -hmm. So it might be, it might be more emotionally invested when she's out there. But I know if you ask her this question, she's more nervous when I fight. She hates when I fight before her. She hates it. Like she does not deal well with it. <laughs> she does not deal well with it at all. I mean, she obviously still goes out there and does her thing and fight, but she's like, "Oh no, I want to be done. I want to be. I want the women to fight first. <laughs> like that's just that's just how she is. And it's we have a we have a good thing. I don't want to. 
people ask me often, like, when do you think you'll stop and all this crap? I don't, I don't know what you're talking about. Stop. What does that mean? But I know I don't want to do it without my sister. So that that that's that's an interesting conversation that that we'll probably be having in a few years because I don't think any either of us are interested in doing it without each other. Right. That's so cool. And, and that's actually a good segue because now I wanted to move on to what is that next phase in your life, which yeah. is your career in law. Last time you were on the show, you were studying for the bar exam and you're going yeah. through that grind. Now you're, you know, a practicing attorney with a firm and everything. Yeah, uh, so even- <laughs> what's that? I just got a work email now, but sorry, go ahead. <laughs> So tell us a little bit about that journey, and then we'll we'll take that some other places. But first, just tell us about that. Yeah, um, you know, it's huh, I man, it's kind of messed up, right? Because growing up, you know, you wanted you want to be exactly what your what your dad wants to be. So I used to say, "Oh, I want to be a karate instructor," and we still have a karate school. But my dad was just kind of always like, "Ah, eh, nah, be something other than a karate instructor." I'm like, okay. And so I settled on lawyer. And so ever since I can remember, I wanted to be a lawyer. So did undergrad with ambitions of going to law school, did law school, and now I'm a practicing attorney. And going, I can admit this now, it was easier. It was easier. Law school, it was it was harder to find the time to train in law school and undergrad, right? But that motivation was there a little bit more. It was a little bit different, right? I was wasn't making any money in law school, in law school and undergrad. Right. So I was going to tournaments to pay rent sometimes, especially in undergrad. I seriously was going to tournaments for rent money. I'm like, yo, I have to train. Right. <laughs> I, I, I need this thousand dollars. I need I need this 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 two thousand dollars. I when the, the first time I won America in 2012 and I got that thousand dollar check. I went back on campus. I thought I was the man. Right. I'm like, <laughs> oh, man, like I have my scholarship money and this extra spending money like this is great. And now um. It's different, man. I'm 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 making some, some I'm a transactional attorney, I'm a corporate attorney. Uh the biggest firm in, in, in Michigan is big law. Like I'm I'm really practicing and it's time consuming. I work all the time. If I'm not working now, I'm training. Like that's really how it is. Like yet yesterday I woke up, six o'clock, went for a lift, came back, did work. 5 p.m., ran four miles, came back, stretched for half an hour, got back online, did some work, woke up this morning, did another lift, did some work till 6.45, then had a private lesson, then I just got done sparring, and now I'm here, right? That That's hard. That's my life, and I'm not doing it for money anymore. I don't need that. Like, I don't I don't care about the the the, the thousand. I didn't even know VFT was money, right? I was just like, yo, baby's a man right now. I got to, I, I want to fight him. I want this. Like that's, I, I just wanted it. And it's, it's weird, but I want it more now. Mm-hmm. It's more, don't get me wrong. It never hurts to want to go with a couple thousand more dollars in your pocket. That never hurts, <laughs> but it's not about that anymore, man. It's, it's now it's about, I won't be able to perform at the level I'm able to perform at right now in 10 years. That's a harsh truth, but it's the truth. And when I look back and I think about how fast this 10 years went by, I started competing in 2011 in the men's division in NASCAR, 17 years old. And it's crazy. Like that was yesterday. Mm -hmm. Like that was yesterday. Like that, that, that was yesterday. And we, we, we have a set. My, my father has a saying, my favorite saying, a man is not old until regrets take the place of dreams. And I don't want it to be 10 years from now and regretting not having given my all to this while I could have. And I'm not in it for the fame. I'm not going to get famous doing this. I'm not going to become a millionaire doing this. But I don't care. It makes me happy. It makes me happy that I get to wake up every day and like, yo, you're the best in the world at this stuff. Right? That gets me out of bed at 6 o'clock in the morning and makes me go run a few miles. That is it's an addicting feeling. And and I missed it. And I feel like I've been robbed of a couple years. I got robbed of a year because of my shoulder. I got robbed of a year because of COVID. So that's two years that I got robbed of. And I don't want to get robbed of anymore. I don't, I got, I got, I got, man, I got, I got asses to work, Jackson, in this, <laughs> this um, um, I'm, I'm very, very excited for it, regardless of practicing. I want to be a great attorney, and I'm, I'm going to be. I'm good at my job. Just having performance reviews. I'm killing it while doing this. And I see people, it's funny, I see people all the time, like, oh, I'm old, younger than me. Oh, I'm done. I've done enough. Haven't won 
a fraction of what I want. Maybe one of the business a couple of times. They're like, I've done enough. I don't know what done enough means. I don't know how it's possible to have too many warrior cups or too many diamond rings. I don't, I don't know what it's like to have too many WKC world championships and maybe one day I'll know what that means, but not right now. I still, I still feel good. You know, I'm a, I'm, I'm my, my splits are still getting lower. I'm still getting in better shape. I'm still adding ads, right? It's, a certain amount of it is a mindset right now at some point my body will get older and i won't be able to do this at the level i'm able to do it at but that's not now that's that's man look at look at look at jack felton does not get enough credit i don't know how old jack is mm -hmm. shit ross too right those yeah. guys as long as you stay in shape you eat the way you're supposed to you work out you sacrifice you push yourself you put that chick-fil-a down Man, you could do this till 35, 36. The people saying that they're too old for it just don't want to do it anymore. Don't say you're too old. You just don't want to do it anymore. Right? I don't, I think, I think the 30 and over division in NASCAR is crazy. I think mm -hmm. that's nuts. Right? Jack Felton is in better shape than all those dudes. Right? <laughs> Jack's 32, 33. Okay. I mean, it's I don't know, Jackson. I don't I don't know what enough is, but I know I, I haven't tasted it yet. I don't know what that tastes like, and I don't I don't want to know what it tastes like. I'm I'm here, man. If anything, diamonds with a fire under my behind. And not even just not even just losing to Bailey, right? It's some fights were too close. Right? Mm -hmm. I, I, I don't think I've 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 stuff still to put together. Mm -hmm. I can still get better. I don't I'm not one of those, these people that say, oh, the judges, whatever. That's what losers do. Mm -hmm. Losers go online and complain about the judges. I'm not a loser. I'm a winner. I'm the best. And I just I just have to train hard enough to prove that. And nothing's going to get in the way of that. Not, not my girlfriend. She knows that. She's cool with it. Not work. You know, it's I'm still here. I love this activity. It's mine. That is so powerful. And it's, it's hitting home with me, too, because it's like going into medical school, I had that same thing. So a lot of people yeah. don't know the full backstory here. But when, you know, the sport came back at Battle of Atlanta, right, the NASCAR circuit came back, I didn't compete. Yes. I went for Black Belt. I did media stuff. I went in the booth. I loved calling the tournament. I loved doing the commentating. That's a, that's a hidden passion of mine that I discovered in COVID. But the reason that I went and competed at U.S. Open, just to the same point that you were making, wasn't because I wanted to win the prize money. People don't know this. This, this might shock people. You don't win any money from being on U.S. Open stage. Yeah. All that money is one in the daytime. Yep. For weapons of these, yep. Right? yep. So you go on US Open stage for free. So I didn't go do that because I wanted to win more prize money or because I wanted another title. I got plenty of US Open titles. Like it wasn't for anything other than there's a new group of, of adults in the adult. Yeah. Group. And <laughs> I wanted to show, just like in the previous generation, and I could win there. I wanted to show that I could. But I could win in the new generation. You are too, a V right? Jackson Rudolph. You have to let them know. I get it. That's You're a competitor, saying. man. I think that that's the message to any of the young sport karate competitors watching this is that at the end of the day, when, you, when you've been through this sport and you've won what you wanted to win and you've accomplished what you wanted and you become the, the top seed or the world champion or black belt's number one ranked person, whatever it is, you keep doing it because you love it and you want, you want to stay that guy, right? Jackson, man. I it, it was a time it was a very brief moment when I first started doing this. Well, that, that when I first started competing in NASCAR, where I kind of cared about like you know rankings and polls and stuff. But it was really easy for me to stop caring about that. Mm -hmm. Period. Right? Because it, especially in our activity, we don't our fans are our participants. Right? Yes. It was I, I just saw a poll online that said what competitors have shined this year. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. And almost everybody, not everybody, I have to give some people credit. But ninety percent of those comments were people that they that other that those the people commenting were affiliated with, mm -hmm. right? So it's you 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 can't do stuff for recognition. The recognition is gonna come, right? Black Belt Magazine is gonna recognize you if you do what you're supposed to do, right? right? And that's an honor. I love seeing that. It's it's beautiful seeing my name in print. Mm -hmm. But there's just something about when 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 you do it not for the recognition, but when you do it for you. And when you, when, you, when you compete to be the best and don't care about the, the popularity contest, then it's all good. Everything else will work itself out. You'll get recognized by who you need to get recognized by. You'll get sponsored by who you need to get sponsored by. The fact that people go up to sponsors and ask to be on a team is crazy to me. Mm -hmm. I'm never doing that, 
ever. <laughs> I, and I never was. 17 years old. Or no, 16 years old. Thank God for Garth Benz. I wanted to be on Team Victory more than anything in the world. I was never gonna ask to be. Never gonna ask to be. And shout out to Garth. Always. Love you, coach. <laughs> and I think that that's a good PSA for everybody, too, is that that's something that I've noticed in the sport karate community now is that people show up to their first six months of competing on a world tour. And then they're like, where's my team at? Like, how, like I need to be sponsored. Like I need to have a name on my back. And it's like that when, when we were coming up and you know, you're a little bit older than me, but it's like, <laughs> a little, a little bit. <laughs> in, in that generation, like you, you didn't wear something on your back until you earned it. Like there yeah, wasn't, there wasn't, like, yes. there wasn't a handout of like, Oh, you come on my team. And you know, I, you, you won one. Come on, man, The black and white wasn't getting ha just handed out to people. You got, you have to earn that man. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And it was back then, It was, that was the long-term goal for a career, right? Like I remember yes. being nine years old and thinking if I could get on Paul Mitchell, I could retire the next day, right? Like if, if I could just wear that uniform once and then, you know, I turned 14 and got on the team and then got to have a full career on it, which is a, a blessing that I'll always be Man. grateful for, right? But it's it, it's like, it's almost like people that are coming into sport karate don't always see that right away anymore. And it's like, no, no, no. This is what it's all about. It's yes. all about earning the right to wear those colors that you wanted to wear for a decade before you got to wear it. If anything, it's cooler to wear a school uniform or a uniform no one else knows and then goes out there and win. That, that, mm -hmm. like, that, that's, I, I was blessed enough to get, you know, sponsored relatively early with Victory. But Victory wasn't, you know, it was, it was, it was Garth's, Garth's school and then the Plowden. That was special. Right when we were on teams and me and Troy would go out there and win teams, that was some of the most fun in my career. I tell Troy that to this day. It was times because I was I was 18, 19. Troy was a little, little, I don't remember how old Troy was, but still coming up, right? And when him and I would go out there, there would be times that we would grab just somebody, right? And we would, me and Troy would be like, we're we gonna win. And we were beating sponsor teams. We beat we beat full circle in 2012 at AKAs in overtime. Right? I beat Ross, Troy beat Hamed. I will remember that for the rest of my life. Mm -hmm. We didn't finish the job, and that's what it, what I ended up learning from Ross when I got on Impact is you have to finish and win individuals too. But winning on a non when you win in a non sponsored uniform, oh my god! I don't I do not understand the rush to to be on a, enjoy the journey, enjoy mm -hmm. it, and enjoy that journey. My when people come up and ask my dad like, oh, can I be on Impact? I'm like, oh man, I don't want this person anymore. <laughs> like, don't ask, show them, earn it got to earn it. Like you said, that's how we grew up. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So many great messages for anybody that's tuning in here at the end of the show. Highly, I feel like I say this every show, but especially this show because uh, Avery's given some great sound bites here. Go back, rewind this thing, watch it back, take some of these quotes, kids, write them down in your notebooks. So that, and that was one thing I, a lot of people, if, if anybody watching watched me when I was coming up in this sport, I'd be like 14 and I was posting quotes on Facebook all the time because those and that's why you are who you are, Jackson. Yeah. Thank you. I appreciate yeah, it. Yeah, man. It's, like you, it's, it's important to recognize who the greats are in our activity and what they did to get there. It's, it's, it's a reason we have so much in common, brother. Right. Absolutely, man. So before we head out of here, first and foremost, thank you. This has been an awesome show. I always appreciate your time. Uh, we've, had, we've had your dad on. We might have to have him on again. We got to get your sister on. Got to so, get Morgan on here. Got the clouds are going to be a mainstay on the Jackson Rudolph podcast. <laughs> Avery, uh, any last words, final thoughts you want to leave our audience with? Um, 2022 is going to be a good time. Hope everybody's training hard. AKAs are right around the corner. The Arctic Challenge, a tournament in Michigan, put on by my boy Chris Gorm, is in January also. If you guys can get out to Michigan, that's a great event. Um, look forward to seeing everybody soon, man. I'm I'm happy uh people are getting vaccinated and the COVID is 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 hopefully dissipating because I'm ready to get back to work. Let's go. Yes, sir. I love it. Well, thank you once again, Avery. Ladies and gentlemen, Black Belt Magazine's number one ranked heavyweight point fighter in the world. Man's won just about everything there is to win. Avery, thank you so much for your time. Thank Viewers. You, sir. Absolutely. And viewers, thank you for tuning in. This podcast wouldn't be possible without your support. Shout yeah, out to thank you guys. Magazine as well uh, for sponsoring the show. If you guys got questions, leave them down in the comments below. I'll be in the comments throughout the throughout the weekend. I'm sure Avery will tune in as well, uh, especially if you guys tag him, tag me. Uh, and if you enjoyed the show, hit that like button, drop more comments, and hit that share button. That's how we spread sport karate to reach a larger audience. 
And if we ever want this sport to get as big as we all know it should be, it takes that type of thing. Share the yeah. podcast that you see, share those polls you see out there, share people's forms that you like, share a good fight that you watch, get that stuff shared on social media. That's how we grow this community. So once again, I'm Jackson Rudolph. That's every, I'm pointing the wrong way. That's every Cloudin. This has been episode 83 of the Jackson Rudolph podcast, and I'll see you next time.